Hello, in this video I want to continue the series I've been doing with racial capitalism and space privatization. I really enjoy talking about this specific LD resolution because it's something I feel like I'm a little bit more familiar with because I have a little bit of experience debating a similar resolution myself. And so I think that I have like a lot of ideas that I can kind of like offer in terms of what crit criticisms will become like most relevant and the ones that kind of like stick out the most in terms of their power against a lot of the affirmatives that will kind of show up. And also a lot of ways that like various critical affirmatives can show up from different types of literature bases. So I'm definitely going to try on this uh, resolution and try to get as much content as possible to try to like get as many like nuanced ideas about like how we can approach the resolution and I definitely want to continue that with this series I think that if you haven't it's definitely important for you to at least watch the intro to racial capitalism space privatization because that kind of gives like my outlook into just like the generic like idea for like what the resolution is really looking like uh, at a base level and like what are some of like the main uh, kind of like uh, ideas for what racial capitalism kind of like is thinking in terms of some of the major uh, arguments that are present under space privatization and I really want to continue a lot of that discussion as we begin to talk about racial capitalism as an affirmative argument for critical teams on the space privatization resolution. I want to talk a little bit about, like about what these affirmatives look like, how you can kind of like think about like various types of methods for that kind of like get to like your ability to contest the questions about what we should do in the context of space and like what that uh, looks like in terms of like what other things you should be uh, looking to defend against, whether it be various case arguments, framework arguments, T arguments, criticisms, counterplans, and dissads. And so I want to start in this video just like I said before, looking at some of like the main focuses and priorities for how you should be making these affirmatives and then talk a little bit more specifically about how it kind of matches up against various forms of argumentation. So for instance, I think when we're just talking about like what are some of the major ideas that you really need to be thinking about when um, trying to consider uh, questions of uh, what racial capitalism is really kind of considering on uh, space privatization. I definitely think there's a lot of angles for like the questions of like doing things like critiquing Whitey on the moon, which I feel like is something that people have like used, in, used as a way to talk about various types of like anti-racist views of like how people like have c kind of conceived of the, uh, the space race in relationship to anti-blackness and capitalism, especially during the time of the Cold War. Whitey on the moon was a kind of fictional story that was written to talk about the ways in which the ascension of white humanity into the, spa into the space race via kind of like Cold War life Logics of like the American dream and things like that only furthered the ability for America to distance themselves from the urban crisis they were creating domestically and various forms of ghetto, uh, ghetto, uh, ghettoification that were kind of like happening at the time that kind of like resulted in a lot of the uh, inequalities and like disparities in urban crises that we see now and so I think that there are a lot of arguments being made about why the kind of like uh, the call in order to like stop space privatization in order to make it more accessible for there to be an open form of public space exploration is a place where this affirmative can really critique the idea idea of a public that can responsibly kind of like create a, a space that is like a, equal to everyone and also allows you to make arguments about like how that ascension uh, operates both in debate and outside of debate. I feel like there are a lot of epistemological arguments being made about like how the kind of ideas that are forward in Why the Moon are ones that are done through the various ways in which we dialogue and talk through various types of ideas within spaces and like why they're kind of like located within what types of investors you make into like the various new spaces that we try to occupy and I feel like a lot of the arguments that you can then kind of like put on top of that really like soak in the idea that the kind of like public space uh, program doesn't do anything better than the privatized one in terms of like how it continues to produce a particular set of crises that like uh, are, are done along lines of like how can they create uh, sources of extraction in order to make like space exploration possible and I think a lot of the arguments that you can kind of pair with that really make it a lot harder for the other team to assert their offense in the ways that they want to. I feel like when you're then trying to switch on to like what are you thinking about like how you want to answer a lot of the case concerns I feel like a lot of it are just a question of how do you consider Whitey on the Moon in the story and the weight of the story outside of the weight of it just being a cold out refusal what can you kind of do in order to think about it in terms of like a particular way of describing violence in such a way that produces us to a different type of spatial relationship and how is that spatial relationship guided by values that are different than capitalism and organized under a different regime i definitely think that this is something that you don't have to answer through the question of being like this is how you get to space but but asking a question of like what type of organizing like a uh, uh, entity or what type of like uh organizing um um framework can you use in order to think about like what ways in which you're able to build a kind of like a uh, uh, um, international resistance against the way in which space is kind of monopolized as a new space and how does that create a different way of thinking about like what we produce in terms of spaces of care equity etc the kind of like imaginations that allows us to access and I think that being able to access a lot of those method questions will really help you get to the root of being able to resolve a lot of like the generic case arguments you'll see in terms of like the cap good debates and like trying to win debates against like innovation and the sustainability of capitalism and being able to win that like 
like all of the kind of like uh, arguments about why you should stay kind of like uh, formed within the state, why you should kind of be using capitalism as a system transition of transition, all turn into arguments for you to be able to make about like how, why do you on the moon and the way in which it kind of cements various types of values of like what types of worlds we can see in front of us and what types of future reservations are available is sutured to the ways in which we do things like debate the arguments that we offer and the way that you kind of envision even things like the affirmative solvency. And thus you have a lot of arguments to play not only on the offensive tip, but also on the way in which the judges evaluate in the debate, which should make it a lot easier for you to get ahead in a lot of these debates. And then I think when you're starting to transition into like what this looks like on a framework and T basis, I really feel like you are at the core crux of the resolution because I feel like the way that the resolution is written is that it doesn't necessitate that I feel like the affirmative has to win that they access some other form of space exploration that's just net better. But I do think you need to win that your kind of refusal of privatized space exploration is something that is generative of like uh, being able to like move towards a different organization for how we use these institutions, societies, etc. And I feel like being able to like situate Whitey on the Moon is your core critique of why the public and the private don't really come enough to check the forms of anti-blackness that are folded from what like makes our desires to, towards space like important or like memorable or like uh, important uh, or valuable to talk about like all kind of come from like this core criticism that you're making and I think that being able to hedge a lot of your offense on why those same things are kind of like enforced by the way in which T and framework also limit and create certain values about like what type of way in which we should do debate and what should be normalized and type of the values that we push about like how we relate to governmentality etc are all ways in which you can kind of like win similar arguments about like how the the resolution is actually over limiting our relationship to space instead of under limiting it because of the way in which it only sees like a particular like yes or no solution to the to whether or not we have to use the government or public uh, space exploration or the private sphere without recognizing the way in which like uh, questions of like anti-racism move the black uh, movements that engage in blackness etc all of which are kind of like operate in excess to these questions and as a critique of the kind of like uh, separation that's put up between these spaces in the first place and I think that operating a lot of your like thesis arguments against why those things trickle down into things like the procedural norms that they defend and other like base impacts that they're reading on uh, framework and T then you have a lot of offense to really weigh against like the kind of like impact turn the way in which they're framing a particular use of the resolution that requires like a, the government or like the usage of the state etc all of which I feel like are important for you to situate like what offense you really think is important as you get down to like closer to the end of the debate and hopefully this video is kind of helpful in terms of like guiding a lot of that stuff as we go in and talk about this in a lot of other contexts in future videos and yeah thank you always for watching